we have a lot to cover in this video here so let's start off by talking about how to basically render this final gather effect really good and make it look accurate and nice okay so I already turned off the fall off parameter so if I render this out again I'll get myself this render right here all right okay so what we want to do is we want to render our final gather with a lot of accuracy accuracy meaning that these little uh, little detailed areas where objects meet up with each other where just little shadows and things like that all these lines that represent the geometry in our scene have to be visible that's how we make the lighting accurate and we also have to make sure we don't get any splotching and we also have to make sure that this thing just looks good in general with final gathering so how can we do that right now this does not look good we don't have any details our shadowing is pretty much uh, ruined right now and we don't really have much splotching if at all but again we don't have any accuracy so to be able to control all of this the main parameters that we need is the point density which I'll leave at a default of 1 which is fine the rays per final gather point is very important and also the interpolation method is important now there's two ways to interpolate the final gather points in mental ray the first method is by using this interpolate over number final gather points which is set to 30 by default this just takes the final gather points and interpolates them together based on the setting you use here a lower setting gives you more accurate lighting but more splotching so it's going to require more final gather rays to make uh, to render out good the bigger number we use here the more accuracy we're going to lose but the less final gather rays we'll need to get rid of splotching so it's a trade-off but there is a second way to interpolate the final gather points and that's down here in this option this is the use radius interpolation method that's the advanced version uh, in the past this used to be the only way to interpolate and control the quality of final gather so it was very difficult to use especially for beginners to mental ray and it would basically turn a lot of people off uh, from mental ray and they would go off and use other renderers that are a little more user friendly now a few versions back they introduced the interpolate over number final gather points feature which is a little bit better more automatic and easier to tune there's just one number you have to deal with and that's it I prefer to use the manual mode here basically because that's the mode that I learned how to use and I've used over the years and I continue to use so I'm going to teach you how to use this mode just so you can take advantage of it that way you know how to use the automatic mode and you know how to use the manual mode here so let's use the manual mode to activate it simply turn it on now by default you have radii and pixels if we turn it off the radii will be calculated in world units so you notice over here it says one centimeter if I turn on radii and pixels it'll just say five that's because it's five pixels if I turn it off it's set to one centimeter I prefer to use the world units here I don't like to use radii and pixels so I'll just use the world units here and then we have two parameters we have a radius and a minimum radius you notice the minimum radius is grayed out the top radius here is the max radius if we activate that the minimum radius will become active and we can turn it on or off okay if we have the radius turned off but we do have this interpolation method turned on here what will happen is that mental ray will look at our scene and it will automatically decide the correct radius to use so even though it says one centimeter here it's actually using a different setting that you don't see in the interface it's actually calculating that on its own so let's go ahead and render this out see what it looks like so this is what we get okay it's no longer using the interpolate over number of final gather points up here if you notice this setting is now grayed out the 30 up here is grayed out that's because you can't use both methods at the same time you can either use this automatic mode up here or you can use the manual mode down here but you cannot use both at the same time now right now mental ray is controlling the radius that it's using to to control the quality of this on its own it's basically guessing and as you can see by the look of the render it's doing a very bad job of guessing because this looks horrible so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and turn on the radius parameter here that way we can tell mental ray you know what go take go take a break I'm gonna take over from now on give me the controls I'm gonna go ahead and tune this myself okay now by default the setting is one centimeter the general rule of thumb here is to make sure that this maximum radius up here this radius parameter is set to 10 percent of the total size of your scene but that isn't a rule that's written in concrete you can actually choose whatever radius you want so you don't have to go by 10 percent of the size of your scene you could it's a good starting point but you can actually go with 10 percent of what you're going to render out so my scene is a lot bigger than what you see here in the render frame window 
So what I can do, if I wasn't going to render out the entire scene, if I was just going to render out this area here, I can use 10% of the area that is being viewed in my camera right now. Okay? But I'm not going to do that. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom out here. Actually, what I'll do is I'll hit T on the keyboard to go to the top view. I'll hit F3 to go to wireframe view. And you can see that my scene has a very, very large circumference here. It's a very big scene. So let me zoom out here. Wow, that's a, that's a huge scene. What I'm going to do is I'm going to measure out the size of this little miniature city here. And that's very easy to do in 3D Max, 3ds Max. I'll just go to Tools. I'll go down here to Measure Distance. And then I can just click on one end over here and one end over here. Now, that isn't exactly the circumference of the scene, but it doesn't really matter. It doesn't have to be exact. You can just go ahead and get the length of the scene, the width of the scene. You can get, uh, you can measure from uh, top down this diagonal to this diagonal end over here, whatever you want. As long as you get a pretty good size of the scene or whatever it is that you're interested in rendering out. Okay? Now, if we hit F11 on the keyboard, we'll open up the Max Script Listener. And right here is where we'll tell you the distance that you just measured out. And the distance for me is going to be about 134.314 centimeters. So I'll just say it's 134 centimeters. So what I'll do is I'll take 10% of 134 and I'll plug it here into the radius. So 10% of 134 is about 13. It's actually 13.4, but I'll just go with 13. Okay. And now let's go back to a perspective view. Let's go back to our camera view here. I'll hit F3 to go back to shaded mode. And actually what I want to do is go back to hidden line mode. There we go. Zoom in here. This is pretty good. We'll render this out again. Now we're using a radius of 13. So the tighter radius should give us a more accurate uh, solution. Which it actually it's not really doing a good job right now. So what I'm going to do is use a minimum radius. The minimum radius should be 10% of the maximum radius. So if the maximum radius is 13, the minimum radius will be 1.3. Okay? And let's render out again. Okay, so it's taking a little bit longer to render. Well, not really much longer to render. But uh, we can see that there's a little bit of shadowy information here. But we are not getting all the details we want. So what we can do is we can actually start to reduce these numbers. So let me take that 13 and let me reduce it to say something like 10. And I'll reduce the minimum radius to 1. I'll render again, and the tighter and tighter we make those th those radii, the more accurate the render is going to be. So if it still doesn't look accurate, we can continue to lower that. That's why I said earlier that 10% of the overall scene size is a good starting point, but usually won't be the final number you uh, you arrive to. So let me take the radius here, and I'm going to put it to a very low number. I'm going to try one, and a minimum radius of 0.1. I'm going to render again. There we go. Okay, so now we can see more details. We can st start to see this line over here better. We can start to see the shadow information, things like that a lot better. And in order to make this look better, we would need to use more of final gather rays. So let's use something like 200. Render out again. And you can see how we start to see our shadowing information looks a lot better. We don't have any splotching and we do have details uh, with the geometry here with final gathering. So it actually looks pretty good. So the idea is to manually come in here and start off at a pretty small number, about 10% of your scene size, and then just start to manually tweak these numbers until you get something that has good accuracy. And then to, to fight back against some of the splotching that will occur, start to increase the rays little by little until you get yourself a result that has a good balance of smoothness as well as accuracy. Once you reach that point, you've got yourself a pretty good final gather solution. Okay, so each scene is different. You have to experiment and do some test renders to find out the right settings for your scene, and then uh, then you'll be good to go. Okay, so I'm going to turn off the manual mode. I'm just going to use the automatic mode for now, and I'm going to switch this back probably to 100. Okay, all right. So this video has been running for a pretty good amount of time. Now, let's collapse the final gather rollout here. There's another rollout here to reuse uh, final gather and, and GI disk caching rollout. Now we used this rollout when we were working with global illumination and photon maps. We were using this bottom section here. Now the top section deals exclusively with final gathering. So we need to cover that next. 
So we'll do that in the next video.